It's not a party. It's not a pastime. Pool is now a sport. The International Pool Tour presents the North American Open Eight Ball Championship from Las Vegas. The world's greatest players versus the sport's legendary Hall of Famers versus the game's most lethal hustlers. They've all come to play in the most grueling and pressurized eight ball challenge ever. For the biggest payday in pool history, over $2 million in prize money. They've come for the cash. They've come for the glory. They've come to the International Pool Tour. Real pool, real rules, real money. Welcome to Q Sports History in the Making and the New Era of Professional Pool. Hi, I'm Matt Vaskersian, and this is the International Pool Tour's North American Open 8-Ball Championship from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm here with pool legend Mike the Mount Siegel and IPT founder Kevin Trudeau. And gentlemen, this is indeed the highest stakes showdown in pool history. Well, absolutely, Matt. You know, 200 of the most accomplished and best players in the world started this round robin tournament. They faced both the toughest competition and the most grueling playing conditions ever. A slower cloth on every table makes every shot really tough, tighter pockets, plus, you're playing upwards of 10 hours a day. So suddenly here at the IPT, players have to be in shape and focus and in dead stroke or they're gone. That's very true. And with over $2 million on the line, the pressure is enormous. None of these players have ever played for this sort of money under this sort of worldwide attention. The International Pool Tour has definitely made pool into a sport. And I think in a lot of ways, it's the toughest sport going because every shot, every inch on the table is a crucial one. Well, we're here at round two of this momentous tournament, and there have already been a number of surprises and big-name players knocked out of the running. Hall of Famers like Champagne Ed Kelly, Machine Gun Lou Butera, Eva Lawrence, and Trick Shot Marvel Mike Massey all have been swept out of the tournament by younger players in round one. Advancing through to this round, players such as Corey Cash Money Duel, Raj Hundell, and Earl the Pearl Strickland, often his own worst enemy, but on a roll, so to speak, thus far here in Vegas. And then there's Mike the Mouth, who after going undefeated in round one, fell short here in round two. Mike, you beat your old nemesis, Lori John Jones but came up short against the Filipino superstar, marvelous Marlon Manalo, and lost eight to five in the race to eight. And that's what propelled you back with us here in the booth. Well, there are worse places to be, but I'd rather still be playing. It's a tough format, and if you make a little bit of a mistake, you're out. Well, Mike, you're out. But here's a quick look at some of the pool masters who are still in, alive and well, and gunning for the biggest prize money in the history of the sport. Johnny the Scorpion Archer. The Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. G-Force, Gerda Hofstadter. Earl, the Pearl Strickland. Here are the international pool tour rules. The game is eight ball. Traditional tough tournament conditions apply. The pockets are four and a half tight inches. The table has a slow nap cloth. You must call ball and pocket, no slop. You must break from the box, no breaking from the side rail allowed. The winner continues the break. The matches are a race to eight. The first player to win eight games wins the match. Okay, back at the International Pool Tour, round two action. Let's go to the table for a marquee matchup. Pool great Johnny the Scorpion Archer from Twin City, Georgia versus the Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan, the snooker legend from Chigwell, Essex in the UK. And guys, for those that don't know their Q Sports in and out, what is snooker and what advantages might a snooker master like O'Sullivan have in eight ball? A uh, snooker, that's a little different game than pocket billiards. The table's played on a little bigger table, and the pockets are actually a little smaller. But probably the biggest advantage a snooker player has is pocketing balls. They learn to make a shot on a very tough pocket, so that, that's a big advantage. Well, in this matchup of pool versus snooker greats, Archer has the advantage here. Five games to one. It's a race to eight, so it's crucial O'Sullivan tries to make his run now. That was a pretty good break there by Johnny, but he didn't pocket a ball again. Boy, and Ronnie's got a nice open table, too. I've actually met him for the first time at this tournament. He's a very nice guy and a phenomenal uh, talent. Great, great player. Well, because he plays snooker and the table is so much better, it's, what, 6 by 12? Yeah, 6 by 12 table. It's a little different game than pocket billiards. Pocket billiards is more offense, where snooker is partly defense and offense. So they're different games, different strokes. I mean, the snooker players, I think, have a big advantage with pocketing balls, but they don't move the cue ball around as well as an American player. Now, so. ex explain, Mike, 
uh, this table. None of the balls are clumped together, so it's pretty. It's a pretty open table, isn't it? There. Now this is a crucial game for Ronnie because he's two and two, right now. Johnny is three and one. So if 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 Johnny wins this game, he is guaranteed to go on. Ronnie really has to win this game. Otherwise, it's a crapshoot based on his win percentage. He may or may not get knocked out of the tournament right here. Yes, and, and you you don't want to be in a position where you have to have the luck factor. I mean, if he wins the match, he's probably guaranteed in. But if he loses it, like you said, there's a possibility he may get eliminated. So, And he's playing the game like he has to win the match. So, so. you sound like a college football coach talking yes. about the BCS computer. <laughs> yes. He actually made a pretty good shot there. He got a little lucky, right. bumped the ball. This guy's a fantastic player, like I said. See, he got perfect. Look how perfect that is. Hmm. See, that's the only ball that he really had a problem with. Now he has a – you can see it again here. He follows the cue ball down. Watch this. That's the touch of pool. People just don't realize how – it looks easy, but when a guy executes a shot, it's, it's something. Now he's just pretty much looking where he wants to play the next stripe, and then the eight's pretty open, so he looks pretty good this wreck. Now, see, he's settling for a little tougher shot, which to an American, this would look tough. Well, he's playing it in the side pocket. The snooker players make shots that are unbelievable, ones that we'd still be looking at, and they just shoot them in like nothing because psychologically the pockets just look so much bigger to them. This is for the win. And the 30-year-old Brit, Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan, chips away at the Scorpions' lead. It's now 5-2 to two in this round two matchup. You're at the International Pool Tour. Real pool, real rules, real money. And a lot of it, more than $2 million at stake. Back at the International Pool Tour, the most dramatic stage in pool history. Johnny the Scorpion Archer, nine-time player of the year in an eight-ball confrontation with Ronnie O'Sullivan, a player who began his illustrious snooker career at age seven. Let's hear more about and from the Rocket, who's playing in his first major eight-ball pool event here at the IPT. new scene I'm enjoying the thought of getting used to a new game and I'm picking it up a little bit slowly slowly I'm on a journey it's a new sport it's a new Q sport it's like Mike Tyson trying to get in with them um, wrestlers or people that can kick and fight you know that's that's what it's like for me you know I'm used to going to a tournament and knowing that you know I'm the I'm, I'm one of the top players to beat there um, I haven't felt that here this week I've been a kind of like you know um, it's like starting all over again that's kind of been a little bit funny to get used to it's always been my dream to come to America. Big pool scene here at the moment, and uh, you know, this it's, it's been fantastic for me. You know, it's 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 amazing. You know, and it's just great to be part of it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, clearly one of the UK's most popular athletes, is a force to be reckoned with here at the International Pool Tour. He trails Johnny Archer here in round two, five to two, but has the break. Now, what do you think of that break, Mike? <laughs> I kind of made a snicker there, but. He uh, actually was supposed to come to Florida and get some break lessons from me. He's a phenom He hits them good, but there's just no power there. You know, he tries to break with his hand, not his body, something he has to work on. But I'll tell you what, if this guy ever gets a good break, which he will, he's going to be awesome on this tour. Didn't pocket a ball. Yeah, that's the worst thing in the world is to break, open the balls up nice and not pocket a ball. But Johnny Archer really or does not have anything really easy. The balls are a little clumped together even though nothing is really tied up. And he has to start with an opening shot that's uh, 
You can see what he's shooting at right here. He elected to take solids, and he actually got a little careless there. He was playing for that ball. What was that? See where the cue ball's next to? Watch how bad he hits this shot. He cuts the two a little too much, and the cue ball just drifts. It could stop almost anywhere there and gets right on top of the solid, and now he's actually in trouble. Five in the side. <laughs> Five in the side. This is the kind of shot you don't want to be shooting over a ball, and they're playing foul on all balls, which if he touches any ball, that's, that's lost a shot automatically. He makes a good shot there. Two difficult shots to start the rack. Sometimes that happens. I'm, you know, take it from me. I'm, I'm a master at that one. That a lot of times, even with 15 balls on a table, you do not have an easy shot to start with. He has some problems here as far as the balls on the right. You got the two and the six ball. And he's looking at that now. I believe he's going to play that ball by the corner pocket, the red ball, and let the cue ball kind of dr – well, actually, he's going to cut the two in, which is a smart shot right now, even though it's a tough shot. He has the ball by the pocket. So if he does hit this a little bad, it should go off. Well, he hit that very bad. He really hit that bad. He, he really didn't have a very tough shot with that other ball hanging there. You can see it again. He, all he's got to do is cut this ball, and he has a protector, the orange ball. But you can see he hit it so bad, he actually hit the other side. So he's given uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan a, a good opportunity here. Well, again, Ronnie really has to win this match Not to uh, guarantee that he moves on. He may move on if he loses this match because it's a round-robin format. Oh, um, look what he did there. Wow. It, see, that's the, sl that's the slow cloth. He just assumed that ball would reach. Yeah, see, people have to realize we're I using... I don't know about that one there, partner. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Johnny Archer makes a comment. He actually hits the shot, would have gone in, it didn't reach. Yeah, I, th I don't think Ronnie O'Sullivan was really paying attention to the speed of that shot. This is a pretty tough shot right here. Oh. <laughs> did he call that one? Yes, he did call that. That was a very tough shot. Watch, he plays... So you have to call the ball and the pocket. Yes, but what he does is he hits the lip, kisses it off that ball, and makes it, which was a great shot. But he still has a problem with the green ball. See by the side pocket, he got the two stripe balls mm -hmm. and the green ball? He still has a problem with that, and the eight ball does not lay well. So he's got a lot of work cut out for him this wreck. No, I don't know if I, I didn't like that shot either. I, I think he's, uh, he's kind of went, went into one of these lapses, like brain lock, they call it. He's playing the six up in the corner. Watch this. It's a pretty tough shot right here now. Oh, oh wow. Well, that's the tight pockets again. Right. Now, you've been playing on these for the last couple of days. Yes. These, these are the diamond tables. It's the finest pool table made in the world. But these are the tournament tables, which have the toughest conditions. The pockets you see right there are much smaller than recreational tables. Ten in the corner. He's actually opened the door pretty good for, you know, you can't take a guy like this, even though the score is five to two, Ronnie O'Sullivan can easily still win this match. This is a much easier looking table for Ronnie O'Sullivan at this point. Yeah, what happens is when your opponent makes two or three balls and leaves you a shot, look at the perfect position He's on that He's got a whole ball. series of shots. Yeah, and what happens is that's an eight ball. That's what happens when you make two or three of your balls and miss or make a mistake. Your opponent always has a pretty good layout. Now, being a snooker player, you'll notice that his bridge, he, Mike, he uses an open bridge. Yes. yes. But he does not power the cue ball. Now, he does not what we call power the cue ball. He pretty much hits everything with a medium speed and doesn't do anything dramatic with the cue ball, so therefore he can shoot with an open bridge. But that's what he's used to doing. You know, in snooker, all shots are shot with an open bridge. Oh, and inside. And look how fast he plays. He actually ran, in five minutes, ran a perfect rack of snooker, which is unbelievable, in, in five minutes. That's just amazing to me. A little tougher shot than he would like, but to him, this is like a piece of cake. England's Ronnie O'Sullivan finesses a win and cuts Johnny Archer's lead to 5-3. to three. We'll return with more 8-ball action. It's 8-ball at its best here at the International Pool Tour, where pool is now a sport.
Airborne. So Ronnie O'Sullivan loses the break here in this big round two matchup. In fact, I think the cue ball might have knocked somebody out in the first row. <laughs> You can see what he did here. He put the cue ball right in the middle of all those balls because he has cue ball in hand. The six, the green ball, is the toughest ball in that whole setup. And you can see what he did. He opened the balls up nicely. He still has a little problem with the blue ball, the two. But the balls are fairly open, so, you know, you don't really know what's going to happen yet. He has to get on a couple key balls. Well, the pressure here has got to be more than these pool players have ever dealt with. I mean, you were here the first two days. They're playing for $2 million yeah. Tell in me prize about it. money. Yeah, my stroke got a little weak, too, uh, throughout the week there. But uh, I perform well, but just it wasn't right for me that, that particular time. Look at this. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> you can't take anything for granted on these pockets. They are the tightest pockets I've ever played on. Well, the diamond tables are probably the finest uh, made table in the world, but they are tournament condition tables yes. specifically designed for the IPT with those very tight pockets. You have to be accurate. There's, you're not going to make balls easy on these tables with this cloth. Well, it's like playing the U.S. Open golf tournament. I mean, if you make a mistake, you're going to pay a big penalty for it. You have to hit each shot precise, and you must play good position. And, you know, it's, it's very difficult. He hit that a little harder than he would have liked. Might shoot it now, I guess. See, he's kind of talking to himself. You see the seven ball. I'm looking way ahead. But the reason he even took solids, if you look at the These are the Stay IPT. These are the IPT balls. Are made yeah. specifically for the Seven IPT. Corner. I love the balls. They're very, they're heavy. They act good. They they cut very well. This is a pretty tough shot right here. Oh, he's rolling it in. Now well, he is really having his way with those. I mean, you you said it earlier. There's not an easy shot with the tight pockets. This no. is like, and we've seen it a lot, like the uh, Masters champion golfer. Will right. rattle run in the in the pocket and have it lay there and then go back to his corner and curse the conditions yeah. like the golfer would curse the rain. Well, he's got a problem here. You see he's going to play the orange ball. He must get on the blue ball right now, and I think he's going to run into – now, see, he's in huge trouble again. He is having – he tried to bump that ball more solid. I believe he can cut this in, but it's not exactly what he wanted. Or in the corner. Yeah, he's got a very tough cut shot here. And then anything can happen. He's liable to hit a ball. I mean, this is kind of a gamble here. He may hit that stripe ball, and there's no telling what could happen. I think he's feeling a lot of pressure. I know Johnny Archer's game. Yeah, he's going to have a little problem with the cue ball control and cutting this in. <laughs> you can see he doesn't <laughs> like it. Check out the Vulcan mind probe <laughs> he's doing with his fingers there. Oh, wow. He actually made a great shot there. He played the cue ball to come on that side of the table. He he cut the ball in, and the cue ball hit the stripe ball, and he played for it to come up table like that. That was a big game, boy. That's a big game there. 5-3 or 5-4 or 6-3. That's, that's, that's one of those what we call huge games in a race to eight. He makes a nice shot there, too. I, nice. don't, know, I don't know that he's had an easy shot on this table. No. He's got one now, though, the eight in the side. He's smiling now. <laughs> this puts him up. The sting of the scorpion. Johnny Archer runs the table and takes a 6-3 to three lead in the race to eight. You're watching round two action of the International Pool Tour, the IPT North American Open 8-Ball Championship. Two million plus on the line tonight.
back poolside at the International Pool Tour. While we were away, Johnny Archer took game 10. It's now 7-3, Archer leading Ronnie O'Sullivan. Johnny on the hill in this race to eight as O'Sullivan racks here for game 11. Let's go to Rebecca Grant with pool fan and pool wife, Melanie Archer. I'm here with Melanie Archer. So tell us, what's the best thing and the worst thing about being married to a pool player? The best thing is that um, I like I like to say that he is still a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me, being a pool player, do you make good money? Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. But the worst thing is when he loses a match, mm -hmm. he, even though he's a great player, he's a world champion, he still feels like he should win everything. And I have to, you know, kind of see him be down. That's the only the only bad thing about it. But then you're so. there to cheer him up. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the good part. All right, great. Thanks. Back up to you guys. Thanks. Well, here's Johnny on the hill. Now watch this break. Now there's a break. That's a big league break there, pal. <laughs> wow. Very, very significantly different than, than Ronnie O'Sullivan. Oh, yes. man. Yes. And, and, you know, over a period, and we're seeing it again. Watch this. That is power. See, he takes the side pocket out of play, hit him so hard and solid that if the cue ball went to a side rail, he was above the side pocket, so the threat of scratching is out of there. Three ball in the corner. Now, Johnny has a, uh, he's got a pretty open table here. He's elected to take the solids. They both, bo now, I don't know what he was doing there exactly. He, I think he made a little yeah. mistake there. Four yeah, I can't corner. believe he designed to kiss the eight ball yeah, there. He's, I can tell by his, you know, now he's going four in the corner. He didn't mean to do that. He meant to hit that a little different. He's got a funny angle here. So he wants to follow this down. I believe he's going to play the one, the yellow ball next. He's going to try and roll this down. Let wow. me ask you a strategy question. Look Mike. what he did there. After Go a ahead. break, do you do you look for when you're when you're diagramming your table? Do you look right. for the least amount of trouble, or do you look for the easiest path? No, you always look for the the immediately you look for the trouble spots because if the balls are open, you should run out theoretically, but you always look to see where the problems are and try and eliminate them as quickly as possible. At least that's what I try and do. He actually got careless on this. He played that ball in the corner, fouled down. He cut it a little wider than he would like, and he's got a very tough shot on the one, which he really, you don't want a shot like this playing eight ball because he's got to cut this in. The cue ball is going to kind of go up and down the table. He's got a little too much angle that he would like on this shot. Again, this is a match game. Yeah. Johnny Archer wins this game, and he takes the match. He probably won't even – he may shoot this, but he may play the seven ball. Ronnie O'Sullivan, very aware of his fate that may not bring him back to the table again in this match. Yeah, he's got to play the seven. That's a very tough shot. I'll tell you what, on these tables, this is anything can happen. Made a great, <laughs> made a great shot. We have no idea how tough that shot. On TV, they all look easy, but I'm, I'm out there, believe me. That was a very length of the table. Just split the wicket, hit it right in the dead, and got perfect on the six ball. From here, it's almost academic. He still has problems, but he's probably going to play the green ball, then the orange ball. Well, if he wins this game, he wins the match, and yes. he's guaranteed to go on into the next round. Ronnie's fate is still up in the air. Yes. Which is a spot you do not want to be in. You'd rather, you know, create your own destiny. And there were a lot of a lot of people in the UK who thought because he was one of the greatest snooker players of all time, coming on to pool, they thought that pool was easier, that he would just automatically roll through this tournament. Right. Well, his break has to improve, but he, I saw right away, he is a great natural talent, and I think uh, he's going to be a big factor on this tour. By the way, if you're watching now and you want to watch all of these matches, they are available at www.internationalpooltour.com. You can download and watch all the matches in their entirety, plus instructional DVDs. Johnny Archer putting on something of a clinic here, speaking of instructional DVDs as the... Uh the power facet of his game has well, really look, come to light. He doesn't no. look happy about no, something. No, he's not happy. He tried to follow. See, he got straight on the two ball. And the problem is his cue ball is close to the rail. He tried to follow up a little bit more because the eight only goes in the left-hand corner pocket of our screen. So he actually has a pretty tough angle here. Great shot. He picks a lot of stuff. Yeah. Even well, when there's nothing there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he yes. imagines a lot of bogeys on the I table. I saw him pick stuff off the floor. Yeah. <laughs>
He, you don't want to go to dinner with this guy. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Johnny Archer is just an eight ball away from giving good time Charlie the Blues. Ronnie O'Sullivan just about done, and that'll do go. it. Johnny Archer gets past Ronnie O'Sullivan here at round two. An eight to three win. Our Mary Strong is with the Scorpion. Let's head over here to Johnny. Johnny, congratulations. You really play like you're in the zone, almost like you're not even playing against your opponent. Is that somewhat of your strategy there? Well, that's what you have to do. Uh, playing guys like Ronnie who, uh, you know, they can say what they want, but Ronnie, you give him an opportunity, he's going to beat you, you know, even though he's not played the game that much. But, uh, yeah, you just basically what you have to do playing this game is you just have to run out your opportunities, you know, and, and I'm getting older, so I'm going to I'm learning that a little more now. So basically, I just try to do it whenever I get the opportunity is do my best. Well, congratulations, Johnny. That was a great match. Good luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much. Coming up, the rematch, Earl versus the girl. It's eight ball at its best here at the International Pool Tour. The break could make or break anybody's game. Here's what we're gonna do first. Put the cue ball as close to the object ball as possible without going over the line. You wanna try and hit the cue ball in the center. Don't hit it left, don't hit it right. The most important thing is try and hit the one, the yellow ball, in this case, solid. You wanna visualize a line going through the cue ball and the front head ball, the object ball. Now, let's try a break. Look at that break. You're watching the International Pool Tour. For a schedule of events, log on to internationalpooltour.com. You are poolside here in Vegas at the International Pool Tour. Earlier today in round two action, Efren Reyes, the magician, went cue to cue with fellow Filipino Francisco Bustamante. Efren, the IPT king of the hill champ. Bustamante, one of the most lethal shot makers in pool history. Tight match between the two masters of eight ball going back and forth with Reyes finally coming through in an eight to six victory. All right, that was earlier in round two action. Mike, do you still have recurring nightmares of Efren Reyes, the man who shellacked you in the finals of the King of the Hill tournament a few months ago? Well, a little bit of nightmares, but I'm going to redeem myself in the next event. Well, of course, Earl Strickland has nightmares about his next opponent here in round two. Austrian-born Gerda Hofstadter, who eliminated Earl the Pearl from the King of the Hill tournament. Before the match, Mary Strong caught up with Earl the Pearl and Ms. Hofstadter. How bad do you want revenge today? Well, I don't want revenge. I just want to win. That's all. I, I don't care if I'm playing a Martian. <laughs> I just want to win. And, uh, but I have to play well to win. And last time I played her, I didn't make nothing on the break. <laughs> but she played well. So. You beat Earl once. What do you have to do to beat him again? Oh, I don't know. I guess it has to go the same way. He has to break the balls nicely open and not make anything. That's what we need here. <laughs> Okay, so we pick up the action here. Strickland versus Hofstadter. Earl has jumped out to an early 4-2 lead in the rematch. And you know what people forget is that once you get past the antics, Earl Strickland from Roseboro, North Carolina, is arguably one of the greatest pool players ever. You know, they're using the Sardo tight rack. That's the official rack of the International Pool Tour. It's the only rack in the world where you get a perfect rack every time all the balls are always touching. That way it's totally fair for every player. Look at that break. If you notice, the eight didn't even move. 
That's because that rack is so tight. Yes. It, yeah. And nothing drops. drops. Nothing dropped. Well, that's uh, Gerda's wish is, uh, you know, her command. She's hoping that Earl breaks, opens the balls up, and does not make one. That gives Gerda a, a, a big advantage. The eight balls are funny. A lot of times you make balls in a break, and sometimes you don't. It, it, it's hard to predict exactly what's going to happen, not like nine ball or any other breaking game. I think that's the biggest problem right now. And you got two other balls that are not together. But it looks like you almost have to take solids here. Uh, in my opinion, so we'll, we'll see what she does. Well, Gerda made it through round one, and so did Earl. That's why they're here in round two. Oh, wow. And the tight pockets cost Gerda yes. her first opportunity today. Yes, now see, that's that's a little uncharacteristic. Uh, she didn't hit it bad, but she obviously missed the shot. Now, what is Earl doing with the glove? I don't know. Earl has got so many things now. He's got gloves. He actually breaks with weights on his He tried to convince me. He goes, you want to break him real hard? Try with these weights like boxers use, and they weigh about 10 pounds each. I tried it for about 10 seconds and couldn't do it. Shh, look oh, at Earl. look at that. Boy, Earl. Gave it right back. Earl, see, that's something else you don't want to do. You know, it's a lot of pressure playing the women. Uh, you know, he's got an easy shot here. He just doesn't hit the pocket with it. I Not mean, even close. Yeah, that's uh, that's the pressure. And this is a Hall of Famer, one of yes. the greatest players ever. Well, Mike, yes. you know you know firsthand a lot and of the well, attitudes among the IPT players when you draw a, a good female competitor, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You're right. supposed to beat them, right. and if you do, well, then no big deal. But if you lose, you know, you've lost something there too. Oh. Put, look at the shot she comes up with. I mean, that was an absolutely perfect shot she Shoots the stripe in, the cue ball goes in. I mean, she actually played that exactly the way it laid. She hit the solid balls. They happened to go in, which didn't matter. But now she has that stripe to go in the corner pocket. So that was a great, great shot. She still has problems. I'm looking ahead. She's got the 13 on the side. There's two balls, the 9 and 1. I can't tell if they're froze together or what. But that stripe ball, if it doesn't go, that's going to create another problem. Pocket. No, she's playing this. I really don't understand why she's playing this right off the bat, unless she just kind of rolls it in very softly. I don't know why she's not playing the f See, oh. I don't, I mean, you know what? I'm, <laughs> oh, she was trying to break up that, ah. yeah, which she did. Yeah, which she did, right. I still didn't like that anyway, though. I think she could have used the other two balls that were together. That has created another problem. So this is not automatic yet. And Earl does not have an easy shot. Sorry. If he even has a shot, I think he's actually playing a safety. Now, that's something you'll very rarely see Earl Strickland do is play safe. safe. <laughs> and I don't know if he did a good job or not. Such a great player, I don't know what to he do. He was trying to actually stick right on the strike ball. Actually, Gerda did not leave Earl a shot. You watch the safety here. when He's trying to stick it right on the nine. And he did, but she actually has a shot on the strike ball. See? Yeah, she has a shot, but this is by no means over. There she is. Well, she made a ball there, but it, like I said... 11 corner pocket. Actually, she can run out this rack, but let's see what happens. I see there is a possibility. You know, Gerda Hofstadter is, is one of the characters of the Michael IPT. She's won a few Austrian fencing championships. She's an avid tennis player. She has great form at the table. You know, I don't watch her play that much, but I know she beat Earl before, so that tells me she can beat anybody. Her problem is those two balls, again, to the left of the eight ball. You see the five and the 13. I believe the 13 may go in the side pocket, or she may try and break them out. That's... That's the decision she has to make right now. And that was a very nice shot, but she has another problem now. People have to realize pool is now a sport with the International Pool Tour. These players, these athletes, are on their feet 10 to 12 hours a day playing pool. Tell me about for it. For seven days in yeah. a row. Tell me about yeah, that it's, one. That's a great point, Kevin. It, it's become really an endurance episode for a lot of players who have not been able to cut it in previous IPT events. Well, mental and physical. Nice shot. Boy, she makes a great oh, shot boy. there. You, yeah. can, you, can feel, you can feel Earl stewing from his corner right here. Well, he's got the lead 4-2. to two, Yeah, but, but this uh, was a big game. This could have been 5-2 or 4-3, to three, which is 
fairly even. See, that was a big, big game right there. Big game. Of course, it's not over yet. She's over a ball. This is not an easy shot. Ooh. Wow. And look where the cue ball goes. See what happened there? She overcut the 10, almost missed it, but lost what we call the cue ball. Now she has a very difficult shot on the 8. This does not have to go in. I can tell you that right now. And this is, again, she knows what the score is. So this that actually adds more pressure to this shot. For the game. She oh, missed, missed it. it. She missed it. I'll tell you what, you know, that, of course, she's left Earl again. Safe again. In a very, <laughs> That's what he just said. Yeah, uh, but this is a tough shot. This is a tough shot. Oh, Earl couldn't get to his feet fast enough. Well, it's actually a safe shot because see how easy he hit it? Even if he had a miss, Gerda probably doesn't have a shot anyway, see? so. But oh. that was a huge game, a lot of pressure. Now, this shot more. could be missed. I can tell you that right now. Boy. Seven in the corner. He's still out of position here. Earl is all over the table. Well, eight ball is not Five Earl's game. Corner. No, not at all. It's nine ball, right? Yeah. I mean, he plays good eight ball, too, but nine ball is his best game. Eight ball, watch this. Wow, Earl. Was gonna do that. Boy, he's eight all over corner. what we call the golf course. He's fine there. Earl Strickland has taken a 5-2 to two lead over Gerda Hofstadter in the race to eight. Gerda needs a break to get back in at more international pool tour when we return from Las Vegas. When I started playing pool, I learned to play pool for love, not for money. I'm a very genuine player. I'm a very God-given, talented player. My toughest opponent is me. If I play well, when I break well, you're gonna play hell beating me. I'm a great player, and you're never gonna see another player like me, I'll promise you, ever. A player that plays fast, enjoyable to watch, kind of crazy, great shooter. You know what I mean? Maybe I might be undescribable. <laughs> Key round two matchup, Hall of Famer Earl the Pearl Strickland versus Gerda Hofstadter. Now you see where Earl put the cue ball? As far over as you can without, he makes the ball that wow. time too. See, he was looking for a break spot. You have to break in between the two diamonds up table there. And he put the cue ball as far over as he could to change the angle of the cue ball and therefore made two balls, and now he likes it. I'll play the three in the corner. He's got to play this right off the bat. He doesn't like it. It's a pretty tough shot, but he has to play this to run the rack. We Ooh. saw Earl change cues there after he broke as well, which yes. for the unindoctrinated, most players break with a separate cue. Ah, and now he's got more problems because he's fairly straight on the rail with this blue ball. He actually got perfect on it, but if he's off the rail a little bit, he would have had an easy run out. Now he's got problems. Pretty dumb. <laughs> Earl's commentating like my pretty dumb, he said. Well, Four ball, corner pocket. This is a tough shot right here. He makes a nice shot there to get out in the open. Now he likes it. Four, uh, one ball in the corner. The balls lay pretty well here. He can play the one. He can follow up for the five in the side, I believe. 
And five on the side. He actually has a problem with, I believe it's the seven ball there. See, the seven, I think, only goes in one pocket. Two in the corner. He's a fast player. Yeah, when the balls are open like this, Earl plays very That's why in nine ball, he likes to play this speed of pool. But in eight ball, you six, cannot do this in the corner. normally because the balls are congested a lot of times. Oh, I see the seven goes right in. I did seven not see the seven point. goes past those two stripes. Gerda Hofstetter getting more familiar with her seat with every shot. What are you looking at? This far from it. <laughs> You're funny. She was this far from the ball while I go, and you were way over there. <laughs> the referee is obviously a little too close to, for Earl's liking. Remember, they play foul on all balls. He may actually made a great run out here if he makes this, which I predict he will. Earl Strickland has taken a commanding 6-2 lead against Gerda Hofstadter. Earl on the verge of avenging a previous loss to Gerda, and more importantly, on the verge of moving on to the next round here at the International Pool Tour. The International Pool Tour is brought to you by NaturalCures.com. It's your alternative to drugs and surgery. Back at the IPT, it's eight ball in the most challenging competition in pool history. Earl Strickland proving a huge challenge to Gerda Hofstadter this time around. He now leads seven to two in the race to eight. Boy, Earl hit those well again. Oh, he was looking over that hole like Brian Doyle Murray at the end of Caddyshack, <laughs> waiting for it to drop. Well, on a faster cloth, that would have fallen. See, that, that that's the thing, too. The break is is dramatically weakened unless you hit him so hard. Now, this is the traditional nap cloth, yes, Mike. Yes, Most of these players haven't played on this because this is what pool was designed to be played on. Yes, exactly right. And Now, she makes a great shot here. Notice how she broke out the green ball. Those two balls were stuck together. Gerda actually has a pretty good run out, but going back to the cloth, you're right. You have to hit the balls. It's like in golf, driving a ball 300-plus yards. I mean, that's what you have to do to get a good result on the break. How, can, how are the players down there reacting? You were on the floor for a couple of days. The players love it. I mean, you know, the people with the weak breaks that on, on different faster cloths are getting results are now crying because I said, well, you know, you gotta you got to practice your break and hit them like Strickland or Manalo or, you know, a list of other gentlemen. So that's the thing. I mean, that separates kind of the men from the boys. She's going to have to draw the cue ball back and break out that two ball. And she, I'm not sure if that goes. She attempted to do that. I'm not sure if it goes or not. If we look at it again, she draws back. Now, see, what happened was, I think Gerda, well, she's got problems here. She can make the six, but she has to either go back and forth, control the cue ball. She has problems here. This is a tough shot, number one. And let, let's see what happens. Ooh, I'm surprised. Now, see, she hit the nine. She wasn't trying to do that. Now she really has problems because you can see the two balls near the rail. It's a very tough shot. Even if she makes it, she may not get position. Her best bet is probably seven in the corner. playing the seven ball. She's got to hit this either very easy or very hard, one of the two. Probably easy, yes. That was, well, that's a very tough shot. Very tough shot. Well, Gerda cannot afford many misses. This is an elimination game for her with Earl on top 7-2 to two in the race to 8. See, she tries to roll the ball in very easy, and you see she overcuts it to try and get on the orange ball. But that's a pretty tough shot. But actually, Earl is actually opening up with a <laughs> fairly tough Play shot. The, uh, nine ball. This is not an easy shot, believe me. The now, Gerda's missed a lot of balls. Yes. And yeah. she, she, at, the, at the King of the Hill when she played Earl, she didn't miss very many balls. Earl was missing all the balls. Yes, I think, uh, well, I think she's got a little intimidated this time in the score being, you know, 7-2. to two. Now, Earl 
actually broke them out, but then they to stuck happen. together. Yeah, viewers that may have remembered the King of the Hill competition would certainly have remembered Earl Strickland self-destructing. Yes. Well, that was one of those things. I mean, it was a 7-7 match, you know, where here he's he's got a commanding lead of 7-2. to two. It's frustrating. Now, he's going to try and play either the 13. See those two balls up in the, the right side of the screen? I think he's going to try and break them out right now or play position for the other strike. I think he's going to try and break them right here. And that is an Earl Strickland great shot right there. See what he does there? Oh, it rolled out. Did you see that? It wasn't going to do that, and it rolled over and gave me a shot. <laughs> Jeez. That never happens for me. Things are changing. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> Ten in the corner. Yeah, I've also noticed that after he admonished the referee, I'm a, I got to play perfect to win. Uh, the officials are now watching the rest the of this match via closed circuit television in the next county. Yes, yes. <laughs> Earl, there's, Earl's able to do anything. See, I think the referees, he's, he's intimidated them more than anybody. Fourteen in the corner. No one wants to incur the, the wrath of Earl the Pearl. <laughs> who is on a roll here on the verge of eliminating Gerda Hofstetter. He actually showed Lapa some ball. some knowledge there running this rack now. I can tell you that right now. He's made a great run out here, broke out balls. You know, he hey, looked like he knew right what he was doing ball. there. Sorry. You didn't, you didn't get the rolls. You didn't play as good that time. You didn't play as good that time. <laughs> So Earl Strickland exercises some of the demons within and ends up winning four or five matches in the round. He moves on to the next round and will be a formidable foe if he continues in stroke. Johnny the Scorpion Archer, one of the heavy favorites to win the event, has also moved on to the next round. Ronnie O'Sullivan, the snooker legend, has advanced by virtue of his two wins in this round. Nick Vandenberg of the Netherlands is in. So is Mika Eminen of Finland. Germany's Thorsten Holman has moved on, as have Corey Cash Money Duel, American Gabe the Babe Owen, and the Filipino connection, Efren Reyes, Marlon Manalo, Francisco Bustamante, and Dennis Orcalo. Allison Fisher, the Duchess of Doom, after a flawless round one, lost all five of her matches here in round two. So she's toast here at the International Pool Tour. So is Lori John Jones and Keith McCready, amongst others. Mike Siegel, a number of great players have dodged bullets here in round two, and since you're no longer in the tournament and no longer your personal favorite to win <laughs> it all, what will it take for these players to continue? Well, they have to concentrate. They have to, you know, eliminate all their fears of the pressure. And it's still early, so we, we you know, we're going to have to see what happens. All right, onward with the International Pool Tour. We'll see you for exciting round three action next time.